Hey, what's up guys? Again, Dragon here, and I'm welcoming you all to my next Let's Play project on my channel. Which, of course, is going to be my Let's Play of Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Of course, released in, well, 2020. And it was also, of course, the first COD game to be released for the, well, the next-gen consoles at the time. If you call it that, anyway. Being, of course, the PS5, the Xbox Series X... S and X. I, I still can't get over that. But of course, I'll be going for the campaign. And of course, this is part of the, uh, well, the second installment of the, I guess, the Warzone timeline, if you call it that. Now, yes, I, I know, I did had a, you know, a Let's Play going on, but it just wasn't really that good. And plus, it was copyrighted because of the, uh, I think, the intro. So, I would have to mute it out. So if anytime you see me like mute something off, I will have something in text to explain why it's been completely muted. So that way, uh, I avoid getting like copyright claims from these like licenses and all that, which sucks because I enjoy these licenses music for you know for the '80s theme. But anyways, let's just say, uh, of course, I'll be focused on the campaign. And of course, I'll be playing on Realism, which is supposed to be the most, uh... I don't see much difference between Veteran or, or Realism, but if you want to go for the, uh, well, the difficulty trophy, uh, definitely pick Veteran to kind of ease it up for you. But I'll pick Realism because it's really... There might be a few differences, but other than that, not really much noticeable. Let that be understood by those who practice terrorism and prey upon their neighbors. Some U.S. intelligence analysts believe America is already in a state of war with the Soviet Union. Are Soviet spies living among us? Fifty-two American citizens have been taken hostage at the American Embassy in Tehran. An unnamed White House official claims that a Cold War disaster could be just around the corner. Mr. President, we have two names linked to the hostage situation. Arash Kadavar and Kasim Javadi. Just give the word. It's time to send a message. There will be no more hostages. You sure we can trust the police, Adler? This guy's done more for less. He'll look the other way. Adler? Glad you could join us, Hans. You remember me. We cleared a move on the target. Kasim is in his apartment, but he's well protected. I can keep my men out of the area for 15 minutes. I hope you brought an army. We brought enough. Pleasure doing business with you, Hans. Come on. Woods is itching for a dust up. We don't want to let him down. We're on the clock. Alright, jeez. I'm f so apologize for being quiet, but... That was all because the whole fucking license shit. So finally get to talk. So this is the mission. Nowhere left to run. We finally got outside. So we have, of course, of course, it's since uh, Black Ops Cold War pretty much take, take place the events after Black Ops 1. So, of course, we see her, we're playing as Mason. And, of course, we have our good old buddy Woods. And we have a newest one here, Adler. So... Now we pick one of the three SMGs here. Well, technically two SMGs, one carbine. So normally, uh, 
All of them are pretty solid choices, but I do like the... Well, the AK-74 for you, which is actually the AKS-74 for you. For some reason, Call of Duty always calls it an AK-74 for you, not include the S. And they always select it as the SMG, despite it's not. It's a carbine, because it fires an intermediate caliber. We really need to take this son of a bitch alive, Adler. This team has info we need. Everyone else can take a powder. Of course, this is definitely uh, Amsterdam, so that's uh, pretty nice. Not a lot of levels or missions that you take place in these certain areas or locations. Hans only bought us 15 minutes. Uh, they definitely enjoyed some of that uh, soccer game. Oh, apologies. I guess for a European turn would be football. Yeah. Okay, almost shot fucking Atlas head. And another cool thing I like is what they did is now you can able to reload while ADS. So at least you can able to be stay on target. Which I'm doing right now. I wonder if we're gonna have that in uh, Payday Free, which I don't think no one actually talked about it, but I don't think we'll we will, unless that's a skill, which I wouldn't mind to be at all. But it kind of seemed to be very useless. All right, let me just uh, pick an actual sorry full. All right, pick up an AK here. Unless, uh... Yeah, it's hard to tell which attachments they have, which are more useful. Cover my ass. No, actually, you cover mine. Oh, oh. Ah, yes, now they show you to do two different takedowns. You could do, uh... Hold for a body shield or initiate an actual takedown. I'll just press for initiate takedown. And they're pretty brutal with these takedowns. Oh damn, that guy went flying. And there's not really a lot of weapon selection in the campaign. Mainly there's like only like three to four ARs. Three SMGs, two shotguns, three LMGs, I think three sniper rifles, so it's not really a lot to play around, unlike, you know, the older COD titles. You know, especially if you played the, uh, the Monfer 2 campaign remastered, which they had a lot of crazy weapons. Pretty much one of the reasons why I had so much a little bit more replay value is to play with the certain guns. And of course the remastered, uh, you have cheats now, so you can actually challenge yourself. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah, with that orange... Uh, uh, I know the name, but I just can't really s pronounce it correctly. The magazine, that the large magazine, or the magazine model for what the AK has when it's orange. Of course, these are almost like aluminum designs, so... For reduced lightweight, well, 
better light weight and uh, just better condition. Which, funny enough, fun fact: these orange magazine that the AKs used to have, it used to be yellow, but due to you know being dried up from the sun, uh, it becomes a little more orange. So that's why you see like orange. Tell us where Arash is, and you will live. I just handle the money. I have no idea where Arash is. It's a kind of damn shame Mason doesn't say those things. Yet, you have to make these choices. It's a damn shame. So, I'll do provide the voice for these options. You have to tell me my friend something, or I can't stop him from throwing you over. Wait, wait. This is Turkey. He's meeting someone in Trap Zone Airfield. Now, now, the first you actually want to do this, the very first choice. Who's Arash meeting with? And of course, you got your little collectible evidence right there. And now there are free things you can do. You do get like a certain calling card in a campaign for doing one of the free things. So I'll just release him. I told you he would talk. There you go. Thank you. But um, of course, ah, oh, you could do it. Or oh, that's interesting. No losing. We got what we came for. I'm not scraping him off the pavement. Hudson, Arash is in trap zone. Oh really? I can't see him. Oh well. So yeah, if you didn't kill Javardi, uh, Kasim is out of the picture. Adler will kill him instead. Yes, Arash. The team arrived in Turkey a few hours ago. They should be in position shortly. Okay, this is still the same mission, except we're just gone somewhere else. Airfield's just up ahead. Let's go find this shithead. Priority is to ID a rush before things go hot. Of course, this was shown during the well, the uh, campaign revealed gameplay. I feel like they copy so much shit from the very first mission from BO1. Of course, the moment that you uh, play as Mason, you light up the smoke. Same exact same thing. Which, funny enough, in BO1, you were actually running away from the the Cuban police, while in Cold War, you're actually being assisted by the uh, the Dutch police. And then at the end of the mission, well. Evolved of a cargo plane. Of course, in BO1, we are uh, actually trying to escape Cuba by airplane. And in Cold War, we try and prevent our target from escaping from the airplane. So, that's definitely a bit of a reverse psychology, Cold War style. Here we go. All right, we got the R700. And even though I'm shooting way dead in the eyes, the game will never allow that. Oh, very bullshit. Just like the one time with the, uh, uh, the one time you headshot the KF and yet you have somehow blew his arm still. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh man, this place, yep, just like uh, the game over mission from COD 4.
Alright, here we go. Of course, our remote controlled car. Definitely one of the most fun kill streaks in the, well, in the franchise. Alright, these are the controls, so. Now, there is a challenge for actually driving under free Jeeps with the RC. Oh, it would been kind of cool to actually, actually drove the RC actually inside the ramp of the plane. Okay, I'm not sure what's up with the screen. I'm not sure why there's a bit said fighting there. Okay, at least the crash here is not like over the top compared to the, the train crash in Cod World War II. That shit was ridiculous. Why do you even take them then? Uh, his plan is already on the way. Uh, you won't be able to stop him this time. Stop who? Perseus. Bullshit. Perseus is dead. Dead? <laughs> All this time and you didn't even know. <laughs> Perseus will watch the worst. <laughs> Hudson will want to hear about this. Let's sweep the tarmac for survivors and get to Langley. Who the fuck is Perseus? The son of Zeus that slays Medusa's head? Other than that, I have no idea. 1943. Detailed information from the Manhattan Project was stolen from Los Alamos by the Russian spy known as Perseus. 1968. Vietnam War. Viet Cod soldiers orchestrated by Perseus attempted to steal an American-made nuclear bomb from a U.S. firebase. Five days ago, while on a mission, we acquired intel that Perseus is in play again and planning an attack on the West. Perseus. The CIA's analysts consider him to be the single largest threat to the free world. Mr. Hudson. We're all aware of Perseus. We're also aware he's more myth than fact. I mean, personally, I think he's nothing more than the Russian boogeyman. General Haig, allow me to introduce the man I suited to respond to that. CIA clandestine special officer, Russell Adler. He's one of the few people who even come close to capturing Perseus. Uh, Mr. Adler, why should we take this Perseus threat seriously? You don't have to, sir. <laughs> yeah, then a lot of innocent people are gonna die. Oh, uh, you gotta expect a lot of Aller's so cocky attitude. Perseus has come into play. It shifted the balance of the Cold War. After 13 years of silence, if he's active, something big is gonna happen. Something that will affect the free world. Mr. President, sir. Mr. President. Ah, such a powerful Mr. music President, for a president. Jason Hudson and Russell Adler. I know their names. Who do you think approved their last mission? Is the threat real? Yes, sir, we believe it is. Can you stop Perseus? We can, sir. I've already submitted the requisition for my team. Sir, their requests are highly irregular. Most likely illegal. If the press gets a hold... What the hell are you talking about? You know who we are? Every mission we go on is illegal. Sergeant Woods, plausible deniability is the backbone of our work. Al, we're talking about preventing an attack on the free men and women of the world. Give Mr. Adler whatever he wants. Gentlemen, you've been given an important task. Protecting our very way of life from a great evil. There is no higher duty. There is no higher honor. And while few people will know of your struggles, rest assured, 
the entire free world will benefit. I know you won't fail us. This is Hudson. How long until we have a lead on Perseus? They're about to get started. Adler's in West Berlin. He should be at the safe house soon. Do you trust him? <laughs> I'm not the one you should be asking, Black. What about his team? It's a strong group. He chased down Sims, Azalei, even pulled some strings to get Helen Park from MI6. We'll get them Mason and Woods soon. I'm not so sure about Park. She and Adler have that business from before. Of course he wants her there. And the new one. Well, well, don't get me started. That's the one we need to keep our eyes on. All right, after like 10 plus minutes of nothing but cinematic scene going on, I'll be stopped for here and for now, guys. And of course, thank you for watching, everyone. Until next time, as I fill up my resume for the identity for Bell. Until then. Farewell, and have a wonderful day, everyone.